Hey everybody, I'm Philip. And I'm Justin. And together we are pajamas. And for us, it is the next day. We are gonna continue on with our Sandman binge a thon a thing. Yesterday we finished we got up to episode five, which was for the most part okay. We're we're starting to have some issues with the storytelling aspects. Yes. In the show. But overall, we're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully those, those things don't continue. Because people are just going to get mad at us. But <laughs> before then, we have two disclaimers. Number one, it's hot. It is August. As of this recording. Summer. Summer sucks. We've learned our lesson. Next year, we will binge watch as much as possible in the fall and autumn and winter and spring months. Because, yeah. Disclaimer number two, I apologize for any stammering, stuttering, slurring, or mouth noise. I have a speech impediment, acts up from time to time, and I have a glandular issue that acts up all the time. I do my best to remove it in post, but sometimes it comes through, and I apologize. So yeah, episode six. So far we've met Lucifer. We've met one random villain after another after another that gets dispatched, and now we have new sibling or something. I'm mm -hmm. sure they're going to die and then a new one will appear at the end of the episode and then they'll die and the new one will appear at the end of the episode and then they'll die and then Corinthian will do something. <laughs> well, let's find out. Let's find out. All right. I know of it, but I don't know necessarily what it's about. And I know nothing about it. This is going to be an interesting reaction review because we don't have any, like, any knowledge of the source material. Indeed. Without further ado, let's get into it. This from Mary Poppins. Did you ever see it? No. Put her in eternal sleep. That was rude. Okay, so what's the matter? You are utterly the stupidest, most self-centered, pathetic excuse for an anthropomorphic personification on this or any other plane. Feeling sorry for yourself because your little game is over and you haven't got the balls to go out and find a new one. You're as bad as desire. Heads up! <laughs> wow. He's not my friend, he's my brother. And he's an idiot. Hmm. I'm just feeding the birds. I can't stay here all day, I've got work to do. She's gonna knock. You can come with me if you want. Mm. Or you can stay here and sulk. I'm not hungry. You can just have it later. Just fine. How are you, sis? How have you been keeping? Aww. I'm well dreamed. Thanks for asking. It's not nice, it's Schubert. Keep going. I can't. He never finished it. <laughs> All we have is a fragment. Do you know who I am? No. Not yet, please. There's something I have to say, if that's all right. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. When I was captured, it wasn't me they were looking for. It was you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do I know you? I need to talk to my wife for like one second. All our flight information is on my phone. I just need to give her the code. Where are I? You? Your time's up. When the last living thing dies, I'll put the chairs on the table, turn out the lights, and lock the universe behind me when I leave. <laughs> And I'm not there for all of them. I learned that all they really need is a kind word and a friendly face. I'm afraid so. Mm -hmm. So there is little one. That's all you get. <laughs> People may not be ready for my gift, but they get it anyway. Most of us will be glad for the company of a friend. We're here to serve them. Our purpose is our function. Come on, then. What are you waiting for? Oh, this is terrible. It was His Majesty's third old taxi. And I enjoy tavern tales told of an evening. Look, I've seen death. 
I lost half my village to the Black Death. It's not like I don't know what death is. Death is stupid. <laughs> You're a fool, Hob. Nobody has to die. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to die. <laughs> Hobbs. Why would any sensible creature crave an eternity of this? <laughs> you could find out. How? I could grant him his wish. And he will be begging for death within a century, I assure you. This could prove very interesting. And what will you do with all that money? I'll find hmm. out you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Let us meet here again, Robert Gatling, in this tavern of the White Horse. In 100 years. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what it's like. It's brilliant. <laughs> Playing cards. What will you people think of next? With any luck, something to get rid of fleas. But what have you been <laughs> doing for the last hundred years? Um. I used to work in Henry Tudor's shipyards. I made a small pile. Then I went north for a year or so, came back as my son. Done that twice now. <laughs> so, more wine. And a healthy gift of gold to the crown. I saw too. A knighthood. <laughs> and little Robin. My first son born in over 200 years on this earth. That I know of. <laughs> this is what I always dreamed heaven would be like. <laughs> Way back. Who is he? His name's Will Shaxbird. Acts a bit, wrote a play. Mm. Is he good? No, it's crap. <laughs> that, that chap next to him. And you write great plays? Create new dreams to spur the minds of men. Is that your will? It is. Then let us talk. Three insane plagues, fires, floods, to the judgment of the Lord. I lost it all. She died in childbirth, the baby too. I've hated every second of the last 80 years. So do you still wish to live? Death is a mug's game. I've got so much to live for. <laughs> I heard something funny the other week. I suggest you find yourself a different line of business, Robert Gadling. You're giving me advice after 400 years. What happened to live your life as you choose? Mm. The choice is yours. That lad, Will Shakespeare. You made some kind of deal with him, didn't you? His soul? Nothing so crude. <laughs> they tell of a tale that the devil and the wandering Jew meet once every century. I look terrible. You look worse. <laughs> you return to this pub every hundred years. Have you nothing to say? I am no devil. And I'm not Jewish. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> What did you do to her? She has old ghosts that I have shown to her. You need not have come to my defense. Clearly. <laughs> I'm perfectly safe. I can't die, remember? Aye, but you can be hurt or captured. You must be cautious. Always. You gave us a start, sir. For a second, I thought you was bloody Jack yourself. <laughs> no. No, I know that, sir. Give us an hard ride with your cream stick. I think not. I bet you ain't got it in you anyway. A cousin raped, impregnated, and deserted her when she was just a child. That might be the only thing I've learned after 500 years. People are almost always better than you think they are. Not me, though. I think I know. Why we still meet here century after century. And what might that be? Friendship? I think you're lonely. Then I shall take my leave of you and prove you wrong. It's very moody. Hey, what? I'll be here in a hundred years' time. If you're here then too, it'll be because we're friends. No other reason. Uh, mind if I... Uh... Uh, I'm actually waiting for someone. I've got a Glen Grant, old enough to be your father. <laughs> I'm older than I look. <laughs> I've seen plenty of friends get in fights in pubs. Even more of them laugh about it together later. 
Maybe in another hundred years. <laughs> You'll have to have found a new pub by then. This place has been sold to make room for new flats. The borough council are trying to stop them, but if you've got enough money in this country, you can do whatever you bloody want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make that the world. Are you another one? Yep, he's stuck. Yep. You're late. I've always heard it impolite to keep one's friends waiting. Oh. Attend, sweet sibling. It is I, desire. I stand in my... A brother has found a way out of his cage. My plan has failed. Hmm. But don't worry. I have a new one. Hmm. Another psychological experiment. Yeah, yeah. If you could live forever, would you inevitably crave for death? No. <laughs> Apparently he doesn't. I would be like him. Like, I'm glad that they went, like, I was, I was really afraid that they were going to go the route of when he lost everything. Like, oh, I can't, the, the pain is so unbearable. Please make it go away. And, but no, he was just, you know, even through all that, he wanted to. Because he would have been like me. Like, he was watching humanity evolve in front of his eyes. Think about that. You go from, like, what, was it 1389? I think so. All the way to 1989? Well, and you know, in, in it's later than that now, obviously. But but you go you go like you know, five hundred and some odd years. You've watched so much stuff happen. Yes. Especially in the last hundred years. I would be him. I would be just. You would have to be careful, though, like Doctor Who, that you would continue to live on, but any friends or family. Yeah. It would be best not to get too attached to anyone because they will inevitably die. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because when he said he had his, his wife and his baby, I was like, well, how's that going to work out for you? But it didn't work out very well. And we finally meet Death. Yes. I've been waiting for That's the cosplay that I shot many, uh, many moons ago, back when I could do that, when my body was physically able to do photography. I photographed a friend and client who uh, wanted to cosplay as death. And she did. And she has such an amazing personality in this show. Yeah. I know very little of the comics. Well, actually nothing. I know of the Sandman person and I know of death. I don't know of death because of the shoot. So it's going to be interesting once we're done and I can finally read spoilers and read reviews and watch videos. How mad are people that we have a black death and, you know... I don't know, I'm not sure if they were Arab, the Canaan Abel, and a Lady Constantine. How, how, how mad will people be that uh, all these changes are being made? Apparently, uh, Morpheus made a deal with Shakespeare. Yes. Kind of feel bad for the guy who actually had the talent <laughs> at the table <laughs> with a broken leg. So that was a little interesting side note. But um, I've been waiting to meet death. Like, I just haven't said anything. So talk about you know, d despair, desire, but death has not been brought up. Other than um, Burgess in the beginning, he's trying to summon death. While he was close, he brought someone that whose name begins with a D. There you go. Have you noticed that they all? Mm -hmm. Of course you have. <laughs> what of a reason? Wait, that's desire. What of a reason they all begin with the letter D? And mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering if that's supposed to mean something. It might. It might. Might find out later. Or just you could ironically have like dream, desire, death, despair. All these different archetypes of things and they'll just be that just sounds cooler it's like families who name their kids after the same letter of you know <laughs> once again this is like another episode where uh we have really cool development and at the end i'm the bad person <laughs> desire shows up at the very end once again yep uh, once again, Corinthian is nowhere to be found. Not sure why we introduced him. Um, apparently, Desire is the big bad now, which 
I am neither here nor there because I haven't seen enough of them to make a assessment. I have on the screen right now uh, paused because I, I want to go back. There are seven boxes, which obviously are the seven siblings. And we see death is the second one. Dream is the third one. The fourth one is missing because somebody abandoned their kingdom. They said the name, but they said it so fast I didn't get it in the episode because Dream said so-and-so is thinking about abandoning there. I think that he mentioned something about the prodigal. Yeah, but earlier there was like, he said, is thinking about abandoning there. Then later on they were like, have you heard from the prodigal? So, and then we have like a book, a piece of paper, and the two things we can't see. You would think one of them would be desire somewhere on this side. And despair has to be somewhere. But again, I feel like I'm beating the dead horse. I just feel like this season could have used more episodes to uh, flush it out a little more. But this episode was also pretty cool. Like we got to meet Death. Um, we got to see Death in action. And I like that Death was indiscriminate. It was young people. It was old people. It was an infant. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Death. That's, what, that's how Death is. Um, oh, yes. It doesn't recognize any sort of made-up social rank. Yeah. But yeah, when she, when she appeared on the screen and I saw the onk, I was just like, ah, ha, ha, I know who that is. You didn't know yet. I was just like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> She's here finally. Out of nowhere, like we end the last episode where he's like, you know, 500,000 feet tall holding John in his palm and then I'm sulking in the park. And then, yeah, we get that really cool thing with... Uh, that gentleman who had immortality. And uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating to think about that Morpheus kind of wants someone to be as miserable as him. That's what it feels like. Because he just seems like he's the most mopiest. Like, oh, like, I made the Robert Smith joke. It applies even more now. <laughs> Holy crap. That dude drinks a glass of Merlot and listens to The Cure every night. Prove me wrong. He wants... It just, it's, it's, it's very fascinating that someone who can have the power of dreams is so bored that he has to have make games for himself in order to entertain himself. I find that very, just very interesting that he can, he can make anything, but maybe it's, it's because he can make anything that it's all so boring to him. Yes. Because he has like the entirety of this creative process at his, you know, beck and call. Yes. Somewhat like death. The her first assignment, well, it was hard, but like any other trade, you get used to it. Mm hmm Yeah. It just it just feels like he's like the most like opposite of his thing. It'd be like if desire was just like uh, nothing turns me on. I don't like anything. Uh, or if death was just like I don't want to kill anyone. I'm so bored. Uh, everything dies anyway. Uh. <laughs> he if just, they were to stop doing things, I wonder would they cease to exist? Yeah, I don't know. I would say it's irritating, but. Like, I think uh, Morpheus as a character in this episode was kind of irritating because it's just like, dude, come on. I get it. I do. So he wants to see if someone had a gift of eternity like he does, would they get sick of it too? Like he is or bored of it or just uninspired by it. And no, no, it's his attitude. Exactly. The guy who's like, I love being alive. Yeah. <laughs> People say, well, you'd get bored if you were mortal. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> well, like you said, there are plenty of things to do. Huh? Simply get up and go see or do yeah. something. Instead, he wants to sit in the park, moping, feeding the pigeons. He was all like, well, I had a quest, and now the quest is done, and I'm so sad. I'm like, dude. Yes, we, the audience, feel exactly the same way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, your quest is over. What are you going to do now? Sit on a park bench and feed the pigeons. 
So there's, there's another neat little, another neat uh, experiment character study like we've had um, with a similar desire is now the big bad, apparently. And has been, it's been me the whole time. <laughs> Am I interested? In, yeah, because with desire, it could just be for fun. There doesn't have to be any malicious intent behind it at all. Indeed. Because desire is going to do it for the hell of it, for the fun of it. Yes, that's what desire is. Exactly. It's a, it's a craving. Yeah, so it's it's going to be uh, cool to see. Unless unless they were like, I've been jealous of you the whole time. You're like, don't do that, please. Because desire wouldn't be jealous. I don't think. Desire is all about self-fulfillment and gratification. This could just be, maybe desire is bored too. And they're like, screw it. I'm just going to freaking imprison Morpheus and... See how that plays out. Hmm. And then show up at the end of episode five, halfway through the season. Hmm. <laughs> so sort of like a Greek myth. Mm -hmm. Why are these gods and goddesses doing these things? To board. Yeah, because I am more interested in going into episode seven than I was going into six. Desire seems like a very intriguing character. I think, I just think that I, I do still 100% stand by that this story could have been told better. Even, even if it's frame for frame, word for word, scene for scene, uh, like faithful adaptation, I still think you could have you know, framed it and woven the story into a richer tapestry. That would have, been, would have been more satisfying, which I'm sure is very polarizing. And I'm not saying it to be polarizing. I just think that it's a very neat story. And they're a very interesting concept. But... um. It, it, it just kind of has these pitfalls that it kind of walks into, and it did it here again. Am I intrigued about Desire? Yes. But you just show up at the end again, and <laughs> like, I'm surprised, I'm surprised why I've had Corinthian just show up for no reason and leave for no reason. Why isn't Morpheus going after him? Desire is doing a very good job at doing their job mm -hmm. by getting, giving us these bits and pieces at a time. We want to know more and more about them. Yes, but then we have the whole, like, it was me all along. Like I said, there, you know, my, our plan didn't work. My plan didn't work. Okay, it's fine. I'm not saying it's bad, but, man, this could have been told better. I'm hoping that the final few episodes really just, like, he's moping on a bench. Go after Corinthian. He's still out, probably cut people's eyes out. Yeah. Do something about that. You got all your crap back. Isn't that the point? Except for your ruby, which shattered and made you more powerful somehow. Yes. I don't know. <sighs> Let's go to the notes. Let's go to the notes. Phillips notes. So, we didn't know. I knew when I saw the onk, but he's sitting with that lady on the bench. I knew it was death. You didn't know it was death yet. But he tells her, you know, when I was trapped, I had one thought the entire time. Vengeance. And then he says, but it wasn't as satisfying as I thought. I was like, yeah, no, shit, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't nearly satisfying as the one guy died by getting his head, you know, knocked back into your, your prison globe. The son died by get eternal sleep, which is what everybody gets, apparently. The other guy died from eternal sleep as well. Like, you didn't do anything satisfying for vengeance. Of course it was unsatisfying. That is your fault. Sir, it was very unsatisfying. See, even even the story, the main character admitted <laughs> what has happened so far is not satisfying. I know. <laughs> yes, that's actually what I su have suspected that the audience feels. They understand exactly what he's saying. We're probably the only two people that have watched this that are like, eh. TJ's loving it, which he's been a big fan of it for a long time. If you've, if you've, liked, if you've liked something for so long, and it's finally adapted, and in a decent way. You might have blinders on, and that's totally fair. I'm not saying it's a, you know, it's just, it's, it's fandom. Yes, but of course, since we don't have that feeling, yeah, we, we didn't have that experience, hence we haven't attached that feeling before seeing right. this. Whereas we're simply seeing the story in itself, instead right. of recalling back to our feelings. Right. 
But well, I put it at the beginning of the episode now. No, I, don't, I forget to say it. But, you know, we haven't seen this before. This is our first look at the lore. So, yeah, we have a, diff we have a different point of view. And then we find out that the prodigal is still missing. Um, we don't know who that is. What D word they are. If they said it in the episode during that one scene, I didn't catch it. And I was like, well, how does death work then? Because people are dying, like, every second, everywhere. Are you yes. just like... Psh, 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 psh. No, she's like, I'm going to stroll around this and walk with my brother. And apparently only, like, five people died in the span of, like, two hours. Yes, it, it, was, it was something that I had to let go because, yes, if this were much more realistic, then, yes, all of them would be traveling... Actually, possibly all over the universe. Yeah. They would never have the time to sit down. Mm hmm Oh, they did. And then Death is getting that one gentleman who is on his honeymoon. He's like, you know, please give me just let me give let me, give me one more moment. I need to go tell my new wife the code to the phone so she can have all this all the information. And I wrote. That's why we know each other's codes. <laughs> we shared that a long time ago. <laughs> yes. I know your phone code, you know my phone code. Like you share codes and passwords and yeah. Share. That's how much we trust each other. Yeah, there's nothing to hide. Yeah. And then Death admits that she uh, thought about giving up and walking out. And I thought, what would that have been like? <laughs> a bunch of that dude that can live forever? Yes. The new sickness, the mortality sickness. Yes, and normally... It Humanity, but all living things. Mm -hmm. And then she's trying to like put into his head, you know, what is our reason for being here, and et cetera, et cetera. And she says, our purpose is our function. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Your job is to make sure people dream. <laughs> yes. And have and, and the nightmares and all of it. Stop. Yes, it seemed, Stop it. <laughs> it seemed like a very easy question to answer. Yeah. And surely yeah. he would have passed it a long time ago. He's so mopey. He's so mopey. Um, then that man is granted the ability to never die. Um, he's been really happy to see humanity evolve, which was, I thought was really cool, because that would have been me. Morpheus is not pleased. <laughs> just like, he's, he's always like... But then he was just like... I'm not pleased. Then 200 years goes by, and the guy says, this is what I always thought heaven to be like. And Morris is just like, I'm not pleased. <laughs> and he meets William Shakespeare. And it was, it was interesting, like, Morpheus goes to talk to Shakespeare. And the guy is sitting at the table. Like, he was just, like, waiting to gloat and to, like, brag about his last hundred years. It looked like Morpheus found a new interest. I was like, hmm, jealousy, mayhaps. They didn't go that route. So the next time they meet, he lost everything. His money, his land, his wife, his son. But he still wanted to live. Yes, so we have seen that he has experienced both immense happiness and mm -hmm. immense tragedy. Yeah, which you're gonna. Yes. If you can live forever, then it's gonna happen. <laughs> it just It's about what you do with it. Then in 1689, there's a drawing of them being made. And mm -hmm. it's like, uh-oh... And then 1789, people are on to them. Joanna Constantine. So, so I'm assuming this is her origin story. And yeah, so there you go. And then the guy, the immortal guy, pretty much says, you know, I used to think, you know, you were here. You know, when, you know, basically, why do you come back every, every, you know, every 100 years and all? And he says, I think it's because you want a friend. You want a companion. You know, you want friendship. And Morpheus is just like, he says, uh, you know, you dare one such as I need your companionship. The guy's like, yeah. <laughs> and then Morpheus throws a temper tantrum and For some you'll, reason. you'll never see me again. Uh, 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 slam. Stomp, 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 stomp. He's kind of like, he's kind of a broody teenager. In a lot of ways. Maybe he is. Maybe, maybe death is older, and he's he's maybe he's maybe he's actually going through his teenage phase right now. That's what he reminds me of. And then 1989 comes by, and yes, uh, the dreaded 80s. The the poor guy's waiting at that, at the pub. 
and Morpheus doesn't show up because Morpheus is trapped. Yes. <laughs> Which I was like, I was waiting, I was hoping they would layer that in there and they did. I was like, yep, yes. awesome. He's stuck in that ball. Yeah. And I wondered if that was on his mind at all. Because he was thinking about, he said, like, I had one thought. Well, obviously, he had more than one thought. You weren't just like, vengeance, 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 for like 100 years. He was like, vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. Where's that immortal guy at? Vengeance, vengeance. <laughs> And then, of course, I had to write it down so I know go, go, to go back to it. Desire in the seven boxes. So hopefully we go somewhere with this now. I'm, I'm digging these random side stories and, and, and back stories and, you know, different uh, experiments that we, we've had. Uh, looks into society and the sociological aspects of it all. But can we go somewhere? With the plot, <laughs> instead of having Desire pop up at the end, and is Desire going to die in the next episode, then we have a new big bad show at the end of episode seven? I hope not. I don't know. It's a wee bit formulaic, but the bits in between the formulaic parts are so good that if they weren't good, I would not enjoy this. I'm sorry. It started off very shaky for me and it's just been kind of shaky ever since it's just the internal storytelling in between it's like it's like it's like it's like it's being bookended with like like oh we're doing this again oh we're doing this again but here in the middle is enjoyment <laughs> so <laughs> desire so yeah we'll see what happens we'll see what happens but i would agree is there anything else we'd like to add about this episode no okay that's gonna wrap this one up <sighs> I wonder how many people are just mad at me. <laughs> like, sorry. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it or not. I assure you I'm not. As always, I don't have a fancy outro. So I'll simply say thank you for watching. And we will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>